we're back out on the bass buggy and we're talking about what baits I like to throw in the late fall including some you may not even be thinking about. Stick around you're gonna like this one. Welcome back to Lowbrow Fishing and as you can see late fall has made it to South Mississippi. Currently it's in the 40s outside, it's clear as a bell and it is windy. And according to the weatherman, it might stay like this for the next week or so. That's just fine with me, less people out on the lake. And if you know where to look when the weather gets like this, chances are you can still have quite a bit of success. Which is the point of today's video. When the weather gets colder, what are you going to throw that's different from everybody else to still land those fish? We know about the jerk bait, we know about flukes, we know all about those techniques and tips that are all over YouTube right now that everybody's working. But what are the things that some guys aren't? Well, first of all, let me start out with a little bit of a story. See, in my area, there's a local discount store called Ollie's. To my knowledge, there's only about five or six of them in the entire country. And these places, well, I used to think it was the most boring store in existence. My wife would like to go there because they had books for sale on cheap. And you could get a bathroom garbage can. You could get pots, pans, rubber mats, mattresses, whatever. This was the type of store that bought what other stores couldn't sell. So if there's a flood or a fire or stores going out of business or whatever, Ollie's buys up all that extra inventory and they sell it to you, presumably at a discount, though it doesn't always seem like it. The thing is, it used to be the most boring store I could think of. It just wasn't my scene. I took my wife because she'd like to go, and I got to spend a little time with her. However, lately, over the past year, their fishing section has really exploded. And you could find some really good deals. Some, not so good. But, as you can see here, they've got Lucky Craft Lures for 8 bucks. Those things generally run from $17 to $25 a pop, depending on what you get and where you get them. And they have a whole collection of discontinued baits you can't find anyplace else. I love that they have so many packs of Berkeley Havoc baits, which are discontinued, yet I love them. Those things work great for me. And I can get them easily when other guys are just having a hard time getting them. And you can see there's giant 10-inch swim baits here for 7 bucks, and they've got jigs and spinner baits of all sorts. But those are not the subject of today's video. See, we talked about throwing things that other guys aren't. Trying to target fish that other guys are not targeting. Right now, as that water gets colder, those fish are coming back out of those creek arms to go deep to their winter homes. And that's fine if you know how to target them. And a lot of guys are using something like this. This is a Kitek 3.3 on a regular 8th ounce jig head. This works great. It's money. Kitek is a great swim bait. You catch a lot of fish with these. I prefer to use it on a spinning combo with about 10 pound braid and I put it on a leader and it works great for me. I, I cast it out and I let it pendulum down and I kind of work it almost like a jig. I'll pop it back up and then I'll let it come back down. Now another way I like to fish this obviously is to cast it out there and slow roll it back to the boat. I can see suspending fish on my electronics and I can see that they're not really in any mood to chase anything so I want to bring this right by them slowly as I possibly can to give them ample opportunity to strike it because a lot of times while they are feeding they just don't have the energy or aren't in the mood to chase something down. I've been able to catch a few of them like that. However, there is an alternative to those. See, we know that Kitex can be a bit pricey at times. A pack of these can run you about eight or nine dollars depending on where you get them. So, I bought these. These are made by a company called Eco Pro Tungsten, and these were two dollars and ninety-nine cents at Ollie's great deal especially since I looked these up online and find out that guys love these as much as they like the Kitex. They're not quite as soft but they catch fish. Like I said I've seen guys raving about them and they're about half the price so I'm going to be throwing these for sure the next time I go out. Again you don't have to spend a lot of money to get the baits and presentations that are going to catch the fish. So which brings us to another thing that I was able to find at Ollie's that caught my eye, and that is these right here. You can see these are pretty garbage looking tubes. They're Mimic Minnow Tough Tube, World's Toughest Tube, right? And they don't look like much of anything, but they didn't have a price marked on them, 
and normally with a card like this you figure you pop it off one at a time you take it up to the register and you pay for it but this these are all taped down so I'm thinking okay I'm gonna take it up to the register and see how much it is and that's exactly what I did and it turns out they were $1.29 not a piece for the entire pack was $1.29 and if you notice there's something very special about these that is the reason that I got it and that is every single one of them comes with a tube jig in them so I got several packs you see they already have the tube jig for $1.29 I'm getting six tube jigs per pack and that's exactly what I ended up so actually I got several packs and these tube jigs are not bad you would think that they would be complete garbage, but I tell you what, these hooks are some kind of sharp. I've already poked myself with them pretty good. So just for that alone, the price is well worth it because tube jigs by themselves can cost about $2 a piece. And in my area, they're not as readily available. You have to order these online since people around here generally don't fish a tube that often. But as you can see, I was able to take it and put it in a regular normal tube and they fit just fine so i'm going to fish these like i said i think that was well worth the money which brings us to a bait not a lot of guys are fishing and that is a tube tubes have that crazy fall which makes them deadly in the winter time and i've not seen anybody throwing a tube i've seen people throwing soft plastic jerk baits and the like and even working a regular jerk bait i've seen guys working bladed baits which is a way to flutter down but i've not seen anybody throwing a tube and i started throwing a tube a couple weeks ago and it works especially in that deeper water when you're finding fish that are suspended i'm throwing this out there this is a heavy enough weight that i can actually use a bait caster so i can bomb it out there pretty good and again i let it float down and i'm almost treating it like a blade bait or a flutter spoon where i'm popping it up and just letting it come back down and as these fall down they swirl they kind of float down which is what makes a tube so appealing to fish and I've actually been catching some really nice ones doing this. So if you're not fishing a tube right now, chances are nobody on the lake is fishing a tube. And it's a good bait to throw to give those bass a presentation that they're not seeing. And remember, it's all about showing fish things they're not seeing. They can't get conditioned to something they haven't seen yet. And this is a great bait to get them started on that. Now another bait that I've had a lot of success on lately in the intermediate depth areas, about eight to 12 feet, which in my area is intermediate. It may be deeper, it may be shallower in your area. Remember it's all relative, but along grass edges and along the backs of creek channels is a chatterbait. In this case, I've got a Strike King Thunder Cricket and these are my favorite. Everybody talks about the jackhammer. Jackhammers are okay, but Thunder Cricket to me is just better. It's a confidence thing for sure, and I just have way more confidence in these as they catch fish for me. But you can see I've got it rigged up. This is a shad imitator, which is what I'm fishing for in the big lake. I've got a Strike King Rage Grub on here, and you can see I've got it turned parallel um, to the hook shank rather than perpendicular. This to me, again, this, is, this imitates a bait fish more, which is what the fish in my area are feeding on now. So... This is what's working for me. This is a half ounce version of the Thunder Cricket and I've been throwing it along grass seams right along hard edges of those hydrilla flats that are now beginning to die back. But the fish are finding pockets in the bottom of them that they're hiding in and this is able to call them up. And it works great, especially since we've had some rain lately and there's a little bit of stain in the water. So this has been calling them out pretty good. I've done really good on that. And an alternative to that, a cheaper alternative to that Thunder Cricket is just your regular Z-Man. This is the quarter ounce version this was four dollars and fifty cents at walmart i believe but i can use this with a smaller type of trailer like a smaller rage grub or even a zoom super fluke junior which will be a great trailer on back of these a regular zoom super fluke will also work but a lot of times i'm trying to pare down that presentation and i want a trailer that doesn't have a lot of drag behind it it doesn't inhibit the hunting motion of this chatterbait and that's something that's been working really well for me. Now a newer bladed jig that has been recently on the market, and that is the Berkeley Slobber Knocker. And this is a peculiar one. I haven't had a chance to throw this yet. The thing that struck me about this is the head here, it slides back and forth like that rather than being on like a swivel or anything like that. It goes through the head. Now this is reminiscent of those switch blade attachments you can put on your jigs to turn any jig into a bladed jig. That's what this reminds me of a lot of. And this head, 
this head is plastic and that really kind of blew my mind um so i noticed that the weight made most of the weight was here on the bait keeper that's a lead weight right there or maybe tungsten but it looks wet but the but the weight is right there on the bait keeper which i thought is wild now i have not thrown this yet so i have no opinion of whether it's good or whether it's bad although a lot of guys are saying that it'll give baits like the jackhammer a run for its money so we will see either way a bladed jig a vibrating jig is another great bait to throw this time of year i'm stroking mine and that is why i prefer something like the thunder cricket where as soon as i start imparting action on it that blade starts thumping now if i'm just trying to slow roll it off of the bottom getting those bass out of those pockets of dead vegetation this works just fine i can slow roll it and once that blade starts thumping it'll stay thumping pretty good but i'm generally trying to stroke it so i'm going to more something like this now if this slobber knocker i can do that with then that's going to be a bonus but i have not thrown it yet we'll see so there you have it, some late fall baits and tips you may have not thought about before. While a tube is a popular presentation, especially in the spring, try it in the late fall. I'm sure that you'll like the results. And as far as a bladed jig or a chatterbait, those work exceptionally well too. Again, we want to give fish presentations that they're not seeing right now because they can't get conditioned to things that they're not seeing. And as always, thanks for watching Lowbrow Fishing. We'll catch you in the next one.